everyone. This is Reb Brad on the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. Today's podcast is part of our Lessons from Lasso series, and I just wanted to take a minute to share that we're finally wrapping up this series. If you're a fan of Apple TV's Ted Lasso, you know the show ended last year, and this has been a fun series for me to do, but to be honest, I think we've explored and touched on just about all that we can in looking at the show. So in the end, we're going to round out the series with a total of 65 different lessons drawn out from this first season. I think the show was immensely helpful because it came out in 2020, and most of the world at the time was shut up and shut in with the pandemic. And so I think it's been a great encouragement and a great joy and great fun. Now, as we've gone along, we've looked at different elements from those 10 episodes of season one. And I've tried to offer a chaplain's perspective on the different things that we see in the locker room, on the pitch, and beyond. Now, difficult themes like loneliness, revenge, fear, and shame, I've tried to balance those things with other themes like hope, love, friendship, belief, and faith. Now, I'm not opposed to doing more lessons from Lasso, but as the show has run its course, like I said, I have a feeling that this series has as well. But and it's a big but. If you have a theme or a topic or a scene from an episode in seasons two or three, and you'd like me to podcast and talk about it, here's where I want to invite you. Would you just share that with me? Send an email to podcast at soccerchaplainsunited.org and include the episode or maybe some of the scene information or details, maybe even a question. And depending on the responses, maybe we'll have another lesson or two or three to go through together. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this journey with me. I think there's been some great lessons that we've learned, whether you're a person of faith or not, whether you're a footballer, a manager, or simply a fan of the beautiful game, or a fan of Ted Lasso. So thanks again for joining us today. And here we go with one of our last lessons from Ted Lasso. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're in the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! In today's lesson from Lasso, number 62, if you're keeping track, we're watching the opening scenes of episode 10, season one. Nathan Shelley enters into the boot room only to find shoes already cleaned and polished, ready to go. The laundry machines rolling in the background. As he walks into the locker room, the kit for the training day is neatly laid out. And in walks a naive and innocent looking young man pushing the laundry cart in front of him. He introduces himself as Will, the new clubhouse attendant. Then, enter Coach Lasso on the phone with Higgins, who also enters the locker room. Both are speaking as though they are puzzled with what's going on. Rebecca, the owner, then enters shortly after, and Nate discovers that it's all been an elaborate setup to deliver the news of his promotion as assistant coach. Amidst the cheers of players and staff alike, Coach Lasso and Coach Beard walk in tandem toward the elevated Nathan with his previously made homemade box, this time containing a whistle that has never been blown before. Coach Lasso gives words of commendation. By the power vested in me by the Associated Football Club of Richmond, I now pronounce you Coach Nate. And he proceeds to hang the whistle around Nate's neck. A few more cheers, and Nate gives a hearty blow on the whistle, thus signaling the start of a football coaching journey. As we watch this creative, in-the-moment sort of rite of passage, it marks the transition of Nate Shelley from kitman clubhouse attendant to assistant coach, formalized by a contract drafted up by the owner and solemnized by the gracious gift of the coach's whistle. Nate will no longer look after the cleanliness of the kit, as much as he'll look to the tactics that go on on the field. Well, recently the club team where I'm a volunteer chaplain had a similar kind of moment. An athlete had gone through the citizenship process, and after his swearing-in ceremony, he showed up for training to a corridor of American flag-waving teammates and coaches and staff shouting and cheering for him while giving him a jersey bearing the year that he had earned his American citizenship. 
Rites of passage are important in football. They signify and mark a moment. In this case, the ritual is about a promotion. Nate goes from a likely low-paid kit person to an assistant coach. There's a nod to his contributions to the team and a hopeful environment and elevation that there is more to Nate than just folding and putting out the uniforms. Rites of passage are also important when it comes to athletes as they change and they go from player to perhaps a manager or some other role around the beautiful game or, or even as they move away from soccer. But in truth, well thought out moments like these are actually quite rare in the game. Oftentimes an athlete, a coach, even executives can often see their days come to an abrupt end. It might be due to injury or results or for some other reason. But few actually ever have that moment when the past is honored and a future vision of who they are becoming is celebrated. Now, for sure, there are testimonial matches for that long-standing, well-loved athlete. Sometimes there will be a sculpture or a statue which is created in someone's memory or honor. There may be a seat, a section, a stand, or even a stadium that's named in honor of some club legend. But there's a select group of people who might make the ring of fame or some other form or fashion of memorializing or remembering someone's achievements or contributions. But the truth is, the vast majority of those in the beautiful game are not celebrated. They're not remembered. And this can make moving on or moving up actually quite difficult emotionally, mentally, and even socially. There's a moment in Jesus's life which stands out to me when he imparts and, and has a, a kind of rite of passage. He's with his best friends at an evening meal, and he takes a basin of water and a towel, and he goes around and he washes the feet of his disciples. Now, this task usually was reserved for a servant, but Jesus, by his example, is modeling serving others. As he does this, there's a little bit of pushback. Jesus is the teacher, the master. His disciples deem this task as too low for Jesus, and truthfully, it was probably too low for them too, because none of them stepped up to do it. Jesus, though, demonstrates that humbleness and servant leadership is the standard, especially for Christian people. My friends, in the spaces where you are today, no matter where you are in the game, let me encourage you to look for moments and ways to celebrate, to honor, to serve people. Especially if you're that top level exec, the head manager or team captain, I want to encourage you to be on the lookout for ways to serve others and elevate them in the right way and the right moment in time. Just as Coach Lasso sees in Nate, he's more than just a kit man. He's an assistant coach with a brilliant mind for the game, and he elevates him in the right time. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson from Ted Lasso. This is Reb Brad coming to you from the touchline.